Hello, dear friend. Greetings to you, and welcome to this day number 110 in our reading calendar. Today we read Deuteronomy 33 and 34, finishing that book, and then Psalm 67, and our first reading in Acts 19. Turning to Deuteronomy 33, in yesterday's reading, Moses showed Israel that the leadership was given to Joshua, and he gave the command that this book of Deuteronomy be kept near the Ark of the Covenant. Then God gave Moses a long song to teach to the people to help them remember. In this song, God described some future events as happening in the past tense. This is a feature of many prophetic writings. Here's one detail you might want to notice today in chapter 33. In Moses' blessings to the tribes of Israel, only 11 are listed. So I'm giving a digging deeper challenge. Which tribe is left out, and what theory do you propose for that one being left out? I encourage you to share your answers at our Facebook group. Deuteronomy 33 These are the blessings that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the people of Israel before he died. The Lord came from Mount Sinai. He rose like the sun over Edom and shone on his people from Mount Paran. Ten thousand angels were with him, a flaming fire at his right hand. The Lord loves his people and protects those who belong to him. So we bow at his feet and obey his commands. We obey the law that Moses gave us, our nation's most treasured possession. The Lord became king of his people Israel when their tribes and leaders were gathered together. Moses said about the tribe of Reuben, May Reuben never die out, although their people are few. About the tribe of Judah, he said, Lord, listen to their cry for help. Unite them again with the other tribes. Fight for them, Lord, and help them against their enemies. About the tribe of Levi, he said, You, Lord, reveal your will by the Urim and Thummim through your faithful servants, the Levites. You put them to the test at Massa and proved them true at the waters of Meribah. They showed greater loyalty to you than to parents, brothers, or children. They obeyed your commands and were faithful to your covenant. They will teach your people to obey your law. They will offer sacrifices on your altar. Lord, help their tribe to grow strong. Be pleased with what they do. Crush all their enemies. May their enemies never rise again. About the tribe of Benjamin, he said, This is the tribe the Lord loves and protects. He guards them all the day long. He dwells in their midst. About the tribe of Joseph, he said, May the Lord bless their land with rain and with water from under the earth. May their land be blessed with sun-ripened fruit, rich with the best fruits of each season. May their ancient hills be covered with choice fruit, May their land be filled with all that is good. Blessed by the goodness of the Lord who spoke from the burning bush, may these blessings come to the tribe of Joseph, because he was the leader among his brothers. Joseph has the strength of a bull, the horns of a wild ox. His horns are Manasseh's thousands and Ephraim's ten thousands. With them he gores the nations and pushes them to the ends of the earth. About the tribe of Zebulun and Issachar, he said, May Zebulun be prosperous in their trade on the sea, and may Issachar's wealth increase at home. 
They invite foreigners to their mountain and offer the right sacrifices there. They get their wealth from the sea and from the sand along the shore. About the tribe of Gad, he said, Praise God who made their territory large. Gad waits like a lion to tear off an arm or a scalp. They took the best of the land for themselves. A leader's share was assigned to them. They obeyed the Lord's commands and laws when the leaders of Israel were gathered together. About the tribe of Dan, he said, Dan is a young lion. He leaps from Bashan. About the tribe of Naphtali, he said, Naphtali is richly blessed by the Lord's good favor. Their land reaches to the south from Lake Galilee. About the tribe of Asher, he said, Asher is blessed more than the other tribes. May he be the favorite of his brothers, and may his land be rich with olive trees. May his towns be protected with iron gates, and may he always live secure. People of Israel, no God is like your God, riding in splendor across the sky, riding through the clouds to come to your aid. God has always been your defense. His eternal arms are your support. He drove out your enemies as you advanced and told you to destroy them all. So Jacob's descendants live in peace, secure in a land full of grain and wine, where dew from the sky waters the ground. Israel, how happy you are! There is no one like you, a nation saved by the Lord. The Lord himself is your shield and your sword to defend you and give you victory. Your enemies will come begging for mercy, and you will trample them down. Deuteronomy 34 Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Mount Pisgah, east of Jericho, and there the Lord showed him the whole land, the territory of Gilead, as far north as the town of Dan, the entire territory of Naphtali, the territories of Ephraim and Manasseh, the territory of Judah as far west as the Mediterranean Sea, the southern part of Judah, and the plain that reaches from Zoar to Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is the land that I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob I would give to their descendants. I have let you see it, but I will not let you go there. So Moses, the Lord's servant, died there in the land of Moab, as the Lord had said he would. The Lord buried him in a valley in Moab, opposite the town of Beth Peor. But to this day no one knows the exact place of his burial. Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. He was as strong as ever, and his eyesight was still good. The people of Israel mourned for him for thirty days in the plains of Moab. Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with wisdom because Moses had appointed him to be his successor. The people of Israel obeyed Joshua and kept the commands that the Lord had given them through Moses. There has never been a prophet in Israel like Moses. The Lord spoke with him face to face. No other prophet has ever done miracles and wonders like those that the Lord sent Moses to perform against the king of Egypt, his officials, and the entire country. No other prophet has been able to do the great and terrifying things that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Let's turn to Psalm 67. The theme of this beautiful psalm is that the salvation that God gives is to be made known to people everywhere, to every ethnic group. 
the Hebrew title is a psalm, a song. Psalm 67 God, be merciful to us and bless us. Look on us with kindness, so that the whole world may know your will, so that all nations may know your salvation. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, because you judge the peoples with justice and guide every nation on earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. The land has produced its harvest. And you, O our God, have blessed us. You have blessed us. May all people everywhere honor you. Let's turn for the first time to Acts 19. Yesterday in chapter 18, Paul met and began working with Aquila and Priscilla in Corinth. When put on trial before Gallio, God defended him so that he didn't even need to speak. Then, that night, Jesus strengthened him to keep on speaking boldly. Acts 19 While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior of the province and arrived in Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit, they answered. Well then, Paul asked, what kind of baptism did you receive? The baptism of John, they answered. Paul said, The baptism of John was for those who turned from their sins, and he told the people of Israel to believe in the one who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul placed his hands on them, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. They spoke in strange tongues and also proclaimed God's message. They were about twelve men in all. Paul went to the synagogue, and for three months he spoke boldly with the people, holding discussions with them and trying to convince them about the kingdom of God. But some of them were stubborn and would not believe, and before the whole group they said evil things about the way of the Lord. So Paul left them and took the believers with him, and every day he held discussions in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years, so that all the people who lived in the province of Asia, both Jews and Gentiles, heard the word of the Lord. God was performing unusual miracles through Paul. Even handkerchiefs and aprons he had used were taken to the sick, and their diseases were driven away, and the evil spirits would go out of them. Some Jews who traveled around and drove out evil spirits also tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus to do this. They said to the evil spirits, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Seven brothers who were the sons of a Jewish high priest named Skeva were doing this. But the evil spirit said to them, I know Jesus and I know about Paul, but you, who are you? The man who had the evil spirit in him attacked them with such violence that he overpowered them all. They ran away from his house, wounded and with their clothes torn off. All the Jews and Gentiles who lived in Ephesus heard about this. They were all filled with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was given greater honor. Many of the believers came, publicly admitting and revealing what they had done. Many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in public. 
They added up the price of the books, and the total came to fifty thousand silver coins. In this powerful way, the word of the Lord kept spreading and growing stronger. After these things had happened, Paul made up his mind to travel through Macedonia and Achaia and go on to Jerusalem. He said, After I go there, I must also see Rome. So he sent Timothy and Erastus, two of his helpers, to Macedonia, while he spent more time in the province of Asia. Let's pray together. Our Lord Jesus, thank you for the way you led Paul. Lord, I pray for my listener now. I pray that you would remove any barriers so that he or she would be filled with the Holy Spirit. We see in today's story how misunderstanding can be a barrier to receiving all that you desire for us. Lord, open our eyes to the truth revealed in your word. And Lord, I want my listener to know that the scripture does not teach that baptism always precedes receiving the fullness of your spirit. But what baptism symbolizes, obedience and the public commitment to be a follower of Christ, does seem like what God's Spirit looks for as He evaluates our hearts. We give ourselves to be totally committed to following You, Lord Jesus, and being obedient in all You command. And may all the nations praise you, O God.